guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine and in this video we're going to be talking about frameworks and programming. You may have heard of frameworks like AngularJS, .NET, Django, but what exactly is a framework? A framework embodies some abstract design and the application you build implements the key functionality within this design. Overall, a framework defines the control flow of your program, and there are a bunch of predefined blank spots you'll need to fill in in your code. Essentially, a framework is a skeleton where the program you are writing defines the meat of the operation by filling out the skeleton. The skeleton links up each piece of code, but the most important work, the actual function implementation, is done by the application. Let's try an example. Here we'll assume that these three functions are declared by a framework we want to use. There is an update function that runs every millisecond, an onkey event function that runs when a key is pressed on the keyboard, and a collision function that runs when two objects collide on the screen. For these functions, there will be a generic implementation. Our job is to go in and provide our own implementations for these functions. We'll be using pseudocode here just to get an idea of what frameworks actually do. Let's say we were creating a game. These functions are called by the framework and all we have to do is implement them. In the case of the game, every time we update or every millisecond, we would want to move a meteor one space to the right. So here, we're writing meteor.x plus equals one that moves the meteor one space to the right. Here we're assuming a little bit and that there is a meteor instance and that meteor instance has, you know, an x variable, an x instance variable that we're accessing and that's okay. In this function we are updating the meteor instance and incrementing its position by one. Now what happens when someone presses a key? Oh, I see you need to add, we'll add key here. Well, that's what we get to implement. We get to implement what happens when someone presses a key. In this case, we'll want to print out the key the user presses. So to do that, I can just go print key, accessing the value of that parameter. Ultimately, you could capture that the user pressed a right arrow key or a left arrow key and have that affect the game or program you're creating. So if the user was like flying a plane in the game, you press the right arrow key, it goes a little bit to the right or it goes up, down, etc. Now what happens when objects collide? We get to decide that as well. Here we'll just print out the fact that they're colliding, but again, if two objects collided, you could show an explosion on the screen or have some other effect in your program. Usually a framework would have more methods than this. But essentially, the framework calls the update on key event and collision functions, so you don't need to worry about connecting them into your code or coming up with a good structural design. You just have to implement specific functions. Let's try an example with real code. Here, we are going to use the Express.js framework with the Node engine. Express is a web application server framework designed for building single page, multi page, and hybrid web applications. If you don't have Node or NPM or Express downloaded, first you'll need to go to Node's website over here and download Node. Once you have Node downloaded, we'll jump over to the command line and start writing some commands. And so the first thing we're gonna do is like make a directory to put all of our code in. So I'm gonna CD into my desktop, which is here, nothing's on my desktop, and then I'm gonna make a directory with make dir, make directory, and then the name of this directory is going to be just hello world because it's going to be our first like application where we're using a framework. And then we're going to cd into that directory hello world and then go ahead and do npm init. npm init will essentially create this package.json file for us and that file holds all of the metadata about the application that we're going to create. NPM is a package manager, which means it's going to allow us to get different packages of reusable code. One of these packages is going to be the Express module. When you install Node, NPM is also installed, and so you should have access to this, and that's how you can kind of check that your Node was installed correctly. So let's go ahead and kind of enter all of these out. So we'll just say hello world here. We'll hit enter, we'll hit enter. Our entry point is going to be that index.js, and so we'll hit enter there, we'll hit enter. It's kind of doing all of the defaults for these, 
we shouldn't need anything else. We'll say yes, this looks good. And then we'll go ahead and install that express module, that express package by just npm install and then express. And this will download the most recent version of express. Now that we have express downloaded, what exactly is express? Essentially, it's the standard server framework for Node.js. With this framework, with Express, we can easily write handlers for Git, POST, and other HTTP requests at different URL paths or routes. And that's what we're going to do right now in a text editor. But before we get to the text editor, I'm just going to do some LS and kind of show you what exactly is in this. If you've never used Node before, never used Express, it's just basically JavaScript. But here we have this package.json, has a bunch of metadata, and then we also have node modules, and these are all of the node modules that are required for the express package to work. So opening that text editor, I'm going to use Sublime, we are going to start writing some code. We're going to save this as index.js because we put that as our entry point in the package.json file. We'll save it in that hello world, and now we're ready to go. The first thing we're going to do is write const express equals require express. And so we are requiring the express module. And then we'll go ahead and create an express application. This express object, which is traditionally named app, has methods for routing HTTP requests, configuring middleware, rendering HTML views, and more. Now we are going to use the app.get method. And this is going to create a route for us, a route definition. And in this case, we're going to say if you're going to forward slash, um, if you're going to that route, then we're going to have a callback function. And that callback function is essentially just going to send hello world to the user. So essentially what that means is that this function will be invoked whenever there is an HTTP GET request at the path just forward slash that's relative to the site root. The callback function here takes a request and response as arguments and then simply calls send on the response to return the string hello world, which the user would see. To run this, we're going to need to start up a server. And so we're going to write app.listen and we're going to set up a server on port 3000 and print to the console. And so in this case, what do we want to print? We're going to do console.log example app listening on ports 3000. So this app is waiting for a request to be sent in and then it's going to return the response. And in this case, if that request, if it has this route, then we're going to send back hello world. So let's go ahead and save this and try running it here in the terminal. And so if I go ls, we see there is our index.js and then we're going to just write node index.js. And this should start the server. And now a server is locally running on my computer and it's listening for requests on port 3000. But how do we access this? Well, we can send a request to this application by visiting localhost 3000. And in return, we're gonna get back hello world. Essentially, all we have to do is go to that link. So if I go to Chrome here and type in localhost, or I'll, get out of that mode, localhost 3000. We hit enter. There we go, we see hello world in our browser. Why do we see that? Well, it's because we're at the site root and that's exactly what we say here. We say if we're at that route, if we're at that place in the application, we're at this page, then go ahead and send this out. If I change this to just hello, we save that, we run this, we have to stop our server and then run this again. There we go. Now we see hello on our web page. So what does all this mean? Ultimately, a framework mandates certain guidelines for you to plug in functionality. It allows your program to be a part of something bigger than you. And the framework calls your code, your functionality, to figure out what to do in its control flow. For frameworks, you only need to provide specific functionality pieces, and that's what makes frameworks very helpful. Notice here, we plugged into the Express framework by creating an Express application and then adding the little functionality pieces, but working within its own control flow. So that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more technical tutorials and follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes. 
There are also a few freebies in the description box down below if you're interested, and I hope you learned something new in this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding.